Dad? Did you have to be up there? Nope. My favorite part of standing up is sitting down. <clears throat> well, I see you got an addition. There's only there. one slide the whole time. I, I can do it. That's pretty one, neat. How do you, what do you mean by one slide the whole time? Just a video of you. It's not an offering slide and a prayer slide and all that for tonight. Ah, okay. Right, so we don't need all the extra. What do you mean that board thing? Testing, one, two. You bringing it up on yours? Nope. Bring it up on the phone, see if it's, is it running? Right now it is, yes. What's your, what's your timer count? 449. 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17. That's weird. 410. So 30 seconds difference. It's a big They're already saying that? Oh, your head. <laughs> A little delay. If you see a screen and don't see anybody, there's a reason for that, ladies and gentlemen. It's a timer. This is a screen to prepare you for the live stream. see you. <laughs> can't hear. She says I can hear but can't see you. Testing one two. Praise the Lord. 
I believe it's time to begin our Bible study. Tonight it is 7.30. Thank God for this opportunity. Amen. Amen. We are glad you're here with us tonight. Let's begin with the word of prayer, shall we? Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight for your goodness and mercy. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity tonight, on this Tuesday evening, to come to your house. Lord, to honor you, to, Lord, open our hearts as we study your holy word. It's our desire tonight to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, satisfy the hunger and thirst for righteousness in the hearts of your people tonight. God, bless and move in a special way tonight as we open your word. Touch our hearts, Lord. Teach us. Instruct us, Lord. Help us to be the people that you've called us to be. And we thank you tonight for the power and the truth of your holy word. Yes, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome. We're here. We're live. It's good to be in Bible study. Amen. Thankful for everyone here tonight, everyone also watching uh, online or on live stream. We welcome you, and let's just open our hearts to the Word of God this evening. Special Bible study we're beginning tonight um, into a new area of the Word of God, and we had been recently I teaching joined. about the different... Uh, ways to have faith in God, and having faith in, in, in God's artillery or, or arsenals where we left off in the last Bible study. We've been t studying Matthew chapter 8. And so tonight we want to begin a special uh, lesson. And this, this teaching is going to be about wisdom. Wisdom. We're going to be teaching about wisdom from the Proverbs of Solomon. So we want to open tonight to the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, and with the help of the Lord, we want to begin a teaching that will uh, go on however, however long is needed, um, but we want to dive into the subject um, of wisdom as it concerns the word of the Lord, as it concerns us. We'll read a few verses of scripture here tonight in the book of Proverbs chapter 1. Uh, in verse 1, we'll read. But just before we read this, I want to kind of preface the teaching and give you just a small example of how the Lord kind of dealt with me about this. Um, now, wisdom, um, we all need wisdom. Amen? We all need wisdom. And if there's... We, 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 live, a, we live in a world where there's a lot of information, there's a lot of... Uh, behind the th scenes, things going on. There's a there's a there's a spirit in the world, the spirit of antichrist. There's a lot of things happening, and one of the things that we're warned of in the Bible about our enemy um, is that he's very subtle. He's very subtle. He's he he's likened to a snake and a serpent for a reason in the scriptures because he's very stealthy. He's very subtle. He sneaks up on people, sneaks up on his prey. And the Bible teaches us in many places and many times that we need to be wise. That we need to uh, even know our enemy. Paul said we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. We're not ignorant. Um, the Old Testament verse of scripture where the prophet said, My people perish uh, for lack of knowledge. They perish for lack of knowledge. And... One of the ways that people are tricked and deceived and fall into traps is because of a lack of wisdom. A lack of wisdom. A lack of understanding of the way things work, the way things are. And even having the wisdom and understanding to have a, a foresight to be able to look ahead. To be able to look ahead to the consequences of decisions that we make. And to look ahead to the ramifications of things. And... What, because what this decision does, it may satisfy an immediate need at that moment, but that decision may bring about another, another consequence, and that decision will bring about another consequence or set of variables. And we have to be able to think, you know, not just in the present, but think in the future, think down the line. And so, wisdom is a big part of that. Um, recently, there was someone that tried to scam us on Facebook. And this is where one of those 
This is where I believe wisdom comes in handy. Um, it had been somebody that sent a Facebook request to myself and maybe some of you too in our church. Um, and the name of the person happened to be, the Facebook name of the person happened to be the same name of one of my dad's friends. And this particular person lives over in Indiana. And so when I saw the request, I thought, oh yeah, I know her. <laughs> That's my dad's friend. And so I accepted the request. And it wasn't until I got a Facebook message, a direct message in the messenger from that individual that I began to see something's off here. I had never even talked to this person before. All I know is that my dad knows the person. And so already for any communication to uh, attempt the communication to come to me was already like, well, what's this? And the way that the communication came, hey, how you doing? You know, I'm like, okay. And I said, I'm doing great. How are you? And the message went along the lines like, oh, I've been doing so good ever since, you know, I got good news. And do you want to know about it? And the conversation began to go to try to spark a curiosity. Like, oh, yeah, what, what happened? You know, something about their life changed. And have you ever heard of this? And it happened to be the U.S. aid. And, and the, this person was, I already, at that moment, I already knew something was wrong. And I went and looked up this aid idea where if you just give a little bit of money and you get thousands of dollars or you get some kind of grant if you just pay them the shipping on the on the money they'll send you a pallet of cash you know right to your front door and just crazy wild stuff that is out there on the internet we're laughing but people give into it people give into it people are very foolish and they don't have understanding and there are a lot of people they give in to scams because they lack wisdom. They lack understanding in these things. And so I just thank God. I said, I said, and I actually took a, a website address and I copied it and pasted it back at this person, basically saying, I don't want your scam. Uh, and they never replied back. They just left it alone. And that's when I realized. And then I looked into the person who is at the real person and I noticed a small difference from the real person to this person. They had left a period out on the middle initial on their name. The smallest little detail, but that's all it took, right? And I saw that, and then I looked up the real person's profile, and I said, no, that looks real. They have pictures and family pictures and where they're from, and they have public information to let you know, hey, this is a real person. And so... I figured that out and put the message out there, so hopefully you, you deleted her and kicked her off of the cyber world, but wisdom comes in handy. Not everything that appears to be real is real. Not everyone that appears to be a friend is a friend, right? And we could probably take a little while on that, but there's a lot of uh, other things going on on Facebook with uh, pretty pictures befriending you and wanting to be your friend, only to find out that it's some kind of porno site or something else trying to lead you astray, Amen. right? If you're wise, you won't even give in to that stuff. Amen. If you're wise, you'll, you'll filter things. If you're wise, right, you won't just go who clicking on every little thing that comes your way. And so wisdom tonight, I believe, is um, appropriate. Wisdom, I believe, is appropriate. And who better to look to to talk about wisdom than Solomon? Solomon uh, was a very wise man. <laughs> Solomon can teach us, and he's going to teach us a lot of things through this book of the Bible. And so a proverb, just before we read, a proverb is a short saying of truth and wisdom. Most of the book of Proverbs is about the wisdom of life. In this book, he speaks of wisdom. He speaks about fools. We're going to talk about the different types of fools in the Bible through this lesson. He talks about riches, friendships, children, the human heart, all, and, and many other things. But the main purpose of his Proverbs were to give wisdom and understanding to the people. And let's read a few verses here beginning in verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. 
to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. <clears throat> The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, mm -hmm. but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Mm -hmm. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. Mm -hmm. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Amen. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood, they lurk privily for their own lives. And so are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. And I will make known my words unto you. Amen. Let's stop there for tonight. Amen. Amen. That's a good stopping point right there. Amen. Amen. It's a good stopping point. Turn at my reproof. Now, as he speaks of wisdom, many times he begins to put wisdom in, um, I don't know, in first person. I don't know if that's the way you put it. But he begins to refer to wisdom as she. And begins to refer to wisdom as a person even that is speaking to us. And in throughout this book and throughout this letter, we're going to find many, many proverbs, many different things that he teaches, insight, understanding, knowledge. And I want to begin with how this man received his wisdom, because wisdom isn't just something that we're going to find in a book. You know, we're not going to go down to the Walmart in the book section and buy a book, How to Know Wisdom, or what Wisdom Defined. You read this book and you'll be wise, right? That's not how wisdom comes, right? We can get knowledge that way. We can get lots of knowledge, but wisdom has been defined by some as applied knowledge, or knowing how to apply the knowledge that we do gain. Amen. There's a lot of people that are book smart, but they're, they're just dumb when it comes to practical things and, and just street knowledge, or street smart, so to speak, if you want to use it as a comparison. Uh, a lot of people are book smart, but maybe don't know how to relate to others um, in, a, in a personal way. And so wisdom is not something that you're just going to gain from, well, if I read the whole Bible, then I'll be wise, or if I read these self-help books, then I'll be wise, and, and it may make us smarter, and it does give us more knowledge, but true wisdom, true wisdom, as she calls us here, turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit, and I will make known my words unto you. The key verse of Proverbs really is verses 1 through 6, but here we find the, the main text is verse 2, to know wisdom and instruction. That's the purpose of this book. The purpose of these Proverbs that Solomon gives are for us to know wisdom and instruction and to perceive the words of understanding. To perceive the words of understanding. There are 31 chapters in Proverbs. 
The purpose of it is to know, to gain knowledge, to have wisdom, to get understanding. Um, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5. Let's flip there real quick. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 says, Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall do what? Preserve thee. Love her, and she shall what? Keep thee. Look at how he puts and makes wisdom so personal and, and so powerful in the life of those that would apply wisdom. If you don't forsake wisdom, it will bring preservation. Right? What are we saying? If you hold on to wisdom and gain the understanding the way God wants us to through His Word, it will preserve us. It will preserve our life. It will preserve our safety. It will preserve our sanity. It will preserve a whole lot of things. Amen? Amen. Why? Because we're, when we walk in wisdom, we avoid a lot of things. When we walk in wisdom and understanding, we can avoid some of the things that the devil, the traps, the snares that he lays for us mm -hmm. in this world. Forsake her not. Love her, and she'll keep thee. What's going to keep us? We know the keeping power of God and the keeping power of prayer, but we still have to make good decisions. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need faith. We need prayer. We need healing. We need all that and worship. And, you know, we need all, all of that. We need, you know, to, to be victorious and live the Christian life. And we can pray all day long, but if we don't make good decisions and if we don't apply wisdom to situations in life, we're just going to get ourselves in trouble. Amen? Amen. And so there's, there's a practical side to living for Christ. It's not all about faith. Faith is involved. But there's, there's decisions. There's practical everyday living and things that we have to incorporate into our lives that will preserve us in the end. Amen. Amen. I know some good people that have faith and they're spiritual and they, they live for God, but they just make some foolish decisions. Amen. <laughs> right? I, I know someone recently did something very foolish, and now they have to pay all kinds of money to, to, to get their vehicle fixed, and because they did something so foolish that you think people would understand. You just don't do certain things, right? Mm -hmm. And just yeah, out, of, out of respect, I'm not going to give you too many details, but, uh, you know, there's some practical things, you know. Uh, if you know there's glass outside in the parking lot, you don't go run across the parking lot with your shoes off, barefoot, for example. You just don't do that, right? Well, I've got faith. Well, you can have faith all day long, but <laughs> see you in the hospital yeah. as you get your feet repaired, right? Yeah. Uh, come on. So, forsake or not, wisdom, verse 7, is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting... Get understanding. Amen. With all you're getting, get understanding. So he Amen. says, this is the principal thing. We're talking about Solomon. Uh, Solomon was the, uh, the son of David. This was the second child born to David and Bathsheba. As you recall, uh, their first child uh, was born out of adultery. That child was taken from David yeah, and Bathsheba died. out of judgment. Yeah. But the second child born to Bathsheba was Solomon who God would use. Yeah. And God is a God of restoration. Amen? Amen. God is a God of redemption. You just look yes. at that story already right there. You know, things happened. It was bad. God judged them. But look what God did after that. And the child that was born from an illegitimate situation, right? And a wrong situation. But look how God restored and God brought even something good later on. Yes, David repented, he had to make it right, but look at Solomon here, now the fruit of David and Bathsheba. Solomon, uh, a little insight to Solomon, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. Um, this tells us how Solomon received his wisdom. This tells us the, the college and the university that he went to, and and. How, what you, how many years of a program that he had to go through, and what kind of degree he graduated with, uh, you know, magnum cum laude, and la da 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 da, and everything else, and he, he was top of the class, and he was the valedictorian, 
And he put all of the certificates on the wall of his, of his house. And because he was so smart after he went to this school the, there in uh, ancient Israel. Are you with me? Amen. I'm being facetious. Amen. Thank I'm you. I'm being facetious. Now, am I making fun of education? No, absolutely not. I went to college. I went to school. I, we need to be smart, right? Amen. We need to be smart. Amen. But our, our smarts don't get us to heaven. Yes. Jesus does. Amen. 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 So look at here. Look at here. First Kings chapter three. First Kings chapter three. First Kings chapter three. Now Solomon, the son of David. David. David was dying. David was leaving. Who was taking over in the kingdom? Of course, David's son. Solomon is going to take over to be the king over Israel. Now up until that point, David had done some mighty things, right? Had led the people of God, done so many mighty things, held in such high esteem, and now his son, whom some may criticize as one being uh, born out of a bad relationship, now he is in charge of Israel, and he has to lead these people. And so God appears unto him in verse 5, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and, and, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. God shows up, says, What do you want? Right? Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people, that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. This is what he asked for. Verse 9, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. Wow. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Right. Wow. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Mm -hmm. This is how Solomon got his wisdom. Amen. He got it from God. Yes. Amen. There's no better wisdom than to have godly wisdom. Amen. Discernment from God himself. Amen. Discernment from the Spirit of the living God in your heart and in your life, directing you and leading you and speaking to you in a way to where you just know things and understand things even though you haven't been to the university yet. Yeah. Are you with Amen. me? Amen. Because God is wisdom. God is, the, is the, the wise God. Paul said the only wise God, mm -hmm. right? Amen. This is where Solomon went to school. He went to a prayer meeting or in a dream, you can say. God shows up and said, ask me whatever you want. Mm -hmm. What an awesome opportunity. <laughs> Whatever you want, I'll give it to you. What if God did that to us tonight in a dream? Ask me whatever you want. I draw my job. I've got my checkbook out. Whatever you want, you just say it and I'll give it to you. And maybe God would have been willing to give him whatever he asked. Yes. Perhaps he would have done this, but we know God knew Solomon's heart. But the response of Solomon is what pleased God. Amen. The humility of Solomon. Amen. The attitude of Solomon that said, I don't know it all. Yeah. I'm like a child. Yes. I, don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know how to lead these people. Yes. God, this is too great for me. This is too big for me. And he said, Lord, you've got to help me with this. Amen. Give me an understanding heart. Yes. He did not make the mistake of giving in to his pride or his arrogance or his lineage. I'm David's son. <laughs> David was my daddy. Yeah. I know who I am. I'm royalty, right? He could have taken that position. Right. Yeah. He could have gotten all proud and said, I'm a son of David. And, whoo, man, David slew his ten thousands. And, and he, he, he whipped the enemy. And 
we've got peace and all kinds of good things. He could have used that as a resume and brought it before God and said, God, I want this, and he didn't do that. What pleases God more than our, than our own ideas, our own works, is having an honest heart that says, God, I need wisdom. I need understanding. Amen. Right? I'm sure he knew some things. I'm sure he had witnessed his father Lee. I'm sure he had an understanding of, of the basic knowledge at something. He knew something. But here he was confessing, I'm like a little child. Here he was confessing that, Lord, I don't know, I don't know anything without you teaching me and you showing me. Right? And so this is what this is what led to the great wisdom of Solomon that we read about. And there's a lot more that, that is going to go into this, how that he was known to be the wisest man on the earth at that time, where kingdoms came to, to witness his, his glory and to the Queen of Sheba. And people would come just to see Solomon because they heard from all over the di distant lands, they heard his wisdom and they heard about his riches because he was so wise and knew how to handle things, and he knew how to direct things, and he knew how to build the kingdom, and he knew how to create a place for his people where they were sustained. And you look at how he ordered his life, and it all happened right there. That was the starting point for Solomon. God, give me an understanding heart. Yeah. Let's go to the book of James. And as we begin this lesson, this is pretty much an introduction tonight about wisdom. As we begin this lesson... I challenge everyone, everyone, we want to begin at the same place that Solomon began. We want to begin at this starting point in this Bible study, and that is asking God for wisdom. Amen. Asking God for wisdom. Verse, James chapter 1 and verse 5. James 1 and 5. If any of you lack wisdom... Let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Amen. 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 The second part of that is, but let him ask in faith. Yes. <laughs> not wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. And this is where that verse comes, where we all know, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. Women included. Okay. Bless you, sisters. <laughs> Double-mindedness, right, cancels the answer. It cancels God moving. He said, don't let that man think that they'll receive anything of the Lord if we have a wavering type of faith. Amen. Really, a wavering faith really isn't faith at all. Because right. faith is constant. Amen. Faith believes. Faith isn't based on the rise and fall of the tide and the feelings and the circumstances and everything that comes our way. Mm -hmm. And he says here, if anyone lacks, lacks wisdom, God is not a respecter of persons. Amen. If there's anyone that lacks wisdom... The Bible tells us here, ask God. Yes. If you need wisdom in a situation, ask God. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what it is. The area, the subject matter. How many believe God is, He's a master of all subjects. Amen. 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 He's a master of every subject. He's a master of every relationship. Yes. He's a master of every job, everything, every, every subject matter there is on the face of this earth. God is already the master of it. He created everything. Amen. Amen. And so if we, if we lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let's begin this Bible study, begin this lesson over the next few weeks by asking God, every one of us, in your prayer life, in your, in your quiet time with God, I want to challenge everyone to begin praying and asking God for more wisdom. Amen. God, give me wisdom. Give me understanding. Help me to know and see things the way that you want me to see them. Not based upon my feelings and, and my perspective and through the goggles of my own experience and the things that I've gone through. But God, I want to know how you know. I want to see your way. Yes. And he promised, if we lack it, 
ask God, and he gives it. How does he give it? Liberally. And he upbraideth not, and it shall be given. He doesn't upbraid us. Right? He doesn't correct us, chide us, right? Or put us down because we need wisdom. Amen. Right? That's not how God is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right? Amen. As God's children, if we come to Him asking for help, asking for advice, He's not going to just, what do you mean? What are you asking that for? You should have known already. You know? <laughs> not like how we do sometimes. You should have known better. Why did you do that? That was... He upbraids not, and He gives. When we do it, ask in faith, right? All right? That's our, that's our challenge, all right? That's your homework, right? For Bible study, as we begin studying about wisdom, as we begin studying about wisdom, let me, let me close with another verse here, because I think I have one more minute, according to this clock here. Oh, I just heard the beep. My time's up. I just heard the beat. How did he get it? He prayed. We need to be careful to not rely upon our own wisdom, our own understanding. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 and 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. The, the age-old expression of follow your heart, just follow your heart, right, needs, to be, needs yeah. to be put up to the Word of God Amen. that clearly tells us you can't afford to follow your heart. Right. Amen. Because your heart is deceitful. Amen. 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 We know this tonight. Our heart is Amen. deceitful. Now we know, whatever, I'm not getting into the technicalities of following the Spirit of God. That's different than following your heart, right? Mm -hmm. But that humanistic, that humanistic, uh, the way that people are these days, just follow your heart. Whatever feels good, and just follow your heart, wherever it leads you. Well, mm -hmm. if the heart's full of sin, that doesn't do any good. Right? Yeah. If, mm -hmm. if your heart's not right with God and filled with God's wisdom, then what is going to be leading that person? Yes. <laughs> not godly wisdom, no. but fleshly wisdom and understanding oh, yes. that only gets us in trouble. Mm -hmm. What do you say? When you forsake God's wisdom, mm -hmm. right, we're not preserved. Yeah. But when we embrace it, when we look to God for His wisdom and His direction, mm -hmm. that's when things change. Amen. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. Proverbs 9 and 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Amen. Amen. We're talking about wisdom. Right? God give us wisdom. Right? Then we need it tonight. Amen. 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 Because the devil, he walketh about as a roaring lion, yeah. <clears throat> seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. And he, he'll use the, the simplest, subtlest little things. But if we walk in wisdom... The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord will lead us into all truth. Amen. Into all truth. Amen. This goes back to the reason why we need to walk in the Spirit. To continually be praying and looking to God. And whatever the situation is, every day, just looking to God, taking time to get in His presence, to follow His Word, to not neglect right, our relationship with God. Because we need to stay in tune with God. So that we can follow that wisdom that He wants to lead us in. Amen. Right? Because God knows. He's the master tonight. Amen. Amen. He's the master. Alright. Wisdom. Thank God for wisdom. Let's all stand and pray tonight. Our Father, thank You tonight for Your goodness. God, we thank You for this, this scripture this evening. We thank You for Proverbs. We thank You for Your servant Solomon, Lord. The examples that we learn from tonight. The examples that we're going to learn over the next few weeks, God, we... Look to you, God, for wisdom. We look to you, Father, for a supernatural understanding that we can gain by the power of the Holy Spirit through the knowledge of your Word. Father, we pray that you would open our eyes. And Lord, like Solomon said, I'm like a little child. I can barely come out and go in. I, I, really, I really don't know the things that I really should know. And Father, help us at that starting point, to acknowledge, God, we don't know everything. God, we thank you for what you have given us. We thank you for what you have shown us. 
For Lord, you have taught us and you've had, you have led us in many different ways. But God, we look to you for more. We look to you, God, to go deeper. Lord, we don't want to make the same mistakes. We don't want to give in to the traps and, and fall into the snare of the enemy. When, Lord, you give us wisdom and understanding. God, help us. Give us wisdom tonight. Give your church, your people, wisdom. That we may see things the way that we ought to see them. And not be deceived. We thank you tonight for the reality. And we thank you for the word of wisdom. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you all. We will see you next time in the house of the Lord. Thursday night. Yeah. We are in service. God bless you. Remember next week we're at conference. We are not here next week. We'll be in conference. But we will be here Thursday and Sunday morning. Thursday and Sunday morning. So get filled up. Get all that you need from God in that time. All right. God bless you. Good night.